your life were a book, what would its title be? When do we become mindful of who we are and where our life is heading? I am Abdulani Ahmed, a student hailing from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. My journey to this foreign land is driven by my ambition to gain knowledge and expertise with the ultimate goal of contributing uh, to the development and progress of my home country. I was born and raised in a small town in Saudi Arabia, where familial bonds were very strong and valued. Amongst these valued relationships was the one I shared with my brother. He was a student here at Michigan State University, but his care of our family exceeded the miles that separated us. Every individual has their own unique story. It may be influenced by your friends, your family, a moment of joy, or a moment of crisis. Protecting my family was always something my father always did, and he told me one day I would have to do the same. My dad took me to the Pirates games. He helped me shoot off fireworks. He protected us. He wasn't bad. My oldest sister always had the closest relationship with her father ever since she was little. Two days after we found out he was going away, I found her sitting in the basement at my father's workbench. She wasn't moving or talking. She was simply just staring straight ahead, eyes brimming with tears. There were no true moments of adversity in my life until about the beginning of high school uh, when my parents separated. This one event set in motion the spiraling domino effect that led me to develop my love for life and my desire to always be better through both my greatest memories and several paths of hardship. From the thrilling matches on the football field to the serene moments in the swimming pool and even the moments of artistic expression through drawing, I have embraced a multifaceted approach to life. These passions have not only enriched my personal experiences, but have also taught me the value of dedication, discipline, and the pursuit of excellence. I clearly remember my brother's return in 2016 when he gave me a Rubik's Cube and challenged me to solve it within three days. Taking up my brother's challenge, I set out to solve the Rubik's Cube on my own. After three hours of hard work, I was not able to solve it with my own, so I decided to use another resource like a YouTube video. After watching the YouTube video, I was able to solve it in 3 minutes, but right now, after 7 years, I could solve it in only 15 seconds. Having been so accustomed to my life before the split, I was completely unaware of how little I actually knew about myself. Uh, having the same friends my whole life, I was anxious and clueless about how to even meet new people. Living in the same house my whole life, I was completely oblivious to my surroundings and completely unaware of what the culture around me was actually like. And participating in the same hobbies, I never questioned if I ever truly enjoyed them, and I never considered trying any new ones. The next month was a blur, a whirlwind of phone calls crying and trying to figure out any way to distract myself. My mom was always talking to lawyers and calling family trying to figure out what to do. All I knew was my basic routine of playing video games, eating junk food, and going outside to play sports, hanging out with my friends. I had to learn how to do everything on my own. Inspired by my brother's achievement, I aim to follow his footsteps and secure the same scholarship he received. To, to achieve this goal, I had to pass an exam that includes both English and mathematics sections. I was confident in my mathematical skills, so I neglected the English portion of the exam. After three months of hard working, it was the exam day. I easily solved all the math questions, but I struggled with the English section. After one week, I received the rejection letter and that's how I ended my senior year at high school. This extreme low point in my life encouraged me to take action and be more mindful about my future. Going to a new school, starting my first job, 
uh, making plans with friends, going to club meetings, and trying new hobbies, they all gave me a greater sense of confidence in myself and who I was. I started telling myself I could do what I wanted and then nothing could stop me from accomplishing what I wanted in life. I realized that just managing my time wasn't enough and that I had to start taking care of myself more and being more independent. The fact that I learned how to take care of myself, protect those around me, and manage my time at such a young age has helped me develop healthy and responsible habits. I finished high school and gave up my life dream of getting a scholarship. So I applied for a good university in Saudi Arabia. Fortunately, I completed the first year there a good grades, making up for my previous shortcomings. As I stand on the threshold of the future, I am filled with optimism and enthusiasm. With the knowledge and experiences I gain in the United States, I am confident in my ability to make a meaningful impact and help to shape a brighter future. In essence, my journey is a testament of the power of passion, collaboration, and an endless pursuit of one's goals. It's a journey that has just begun, and I eagerly look forward to the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, knowing that they will shape the chapters of my future. In my leisure time, I immerse myself in the world of books, finding great pleasure and the knowledge and stories they offer. If your life were a book, what would its title be? While I haven't settled on a title just yet, I'm working hard to ensure each chapter is special and each page is meaningful, leaving a tangible impact that can inspire not only myself, but also other people. Well, my dad lost two years of his life. I lost two years with him. Time I will never get back, and now I cherish every second. Being aware of who you are today is the foundation of knowing who you could be tomorrow.